Hello everybody and welcome to this tutorial. This is part three. Anyway, today we're just gonna do a little bit more configuration. So just two commands. You need to uh, do this one. So you need to make an adjustment to your firewall and make sure that you have this port here and port 80 here. You can follow through exactly the same command as I have, except you need to change the interface here. And you can see I've been testing this on my physical machine, so I've used the wireless interface there. But here it would be ETH. Oops. Uh, moment. Here it would be ETH zero. And likewise, you will adapt it to whatever your whatever you your operating system your markation for that interface that you are using is if you are using Kali Linux as I am for this for the purposes of this tutorial and if you have a default install then you can type in exactly the same command as I have typed in now with ETH 0 anyway uh, don't need to reset the service again in addition to that in addition to that command where is it ah, here excellent so you will need to do this as well I know that we've done this in the previous tutorial but I am I take it that we are doing it from scratch so it's echo one and just put it into IP forward I'm not gonna go too much into this or how you can check it because I already explained it in the previous tutorials down below are just some scripts which we're going which some of which we have downloaded from the net and the rest you can download on your own if you wish but in any case I want to actually get this uh, get this started and before I can do that I just need to do the Apache configuration quickly nothing really special about that uh, you make this directory so like this mkdir var www.tmp press enter okay it cannot create a directory because I have already created it and down below is the mode mod mod change for permissions actually you are changing permissions for that directory so nothing nothing frightening there it's just chmod 777 and make sure that it's slash var slash www slash tmp that's it I the mod was already 777 there but whatever I'm just gonna do it one more time anyway go ahead and clear your screen service HTTPD restart uh, oh it's not HTTPD sorry HTTPD is for Fedora uh, here it's Apache 2 just the name of the package ah oh, come on there we go uh, it's gonna it's gonna restart anyway it's gonna pop up a warning it says could not re reliably determine the server's fully qualified domain name uh, doesn't matter that's just a warning uh, you are not required to actually set that up the server will run just fine without it go ahead and clear the screen and we have squid that is running at the moment as we have restarted it just a moment ago and now we need to conduct an ARP spoof here I've been conducting a bit of our spoofing myself prior to this prior to this tutorial just to make sure that everything has everything works and I do believe ah there we go I have it so type in arp spoof dash i for the interface dash t for a victim and dash r for a default gateway then just flip them around and ah come on tell me I have them flipped I do have them flipped wow this is amazing Excellent. In the previous tutorials, I have explained why this is necessary, why you need to do this. I know that my victim's IP address is the last, the last octet is 101. Uh, if you, if you don't know what it is, just use nmap and figure out which hosts are alive on the network. Go ahead and press enter here. Press enter here. The ARP spoofing process is alive and rolling. Go ahead and click on your Windows. A, well, I'm using Windows 8.1 machine. You, you, you could be using something else, completely irrelevant. What we are using, plenty of operating systems out there. Now, uh, keynote here. These scripts are not always going to work, and not all of them will work with the same things. So just read the read the read through the files when you download them. 
read what they say if there are any readme files or uh, if it doesn't work with something just type it out on the forums type it out on your favorite search engine and you will see that people before you have encountered similar problems and they will t you will pretty much be able to see what is going on so I do need to show you something with this terminal here I need a large one tell me you're gonna increase no you will not properties oh this is a cursor size sorry I need a font I need a lot larger font because I'm apparently blind no larger than this uh, give me this excellent uh, so I'm just gonna clear the screen here uh, CLS is here and this is how I know for sure that this computer is ARP spoof. This is something that I've been meaning to tell you but I just never got around to it really. Uh, you type in ARP-A for all and press enter. Okay so this is one interface, another, another, we're not interested in those, we are interested in this one. How do I know that I'm interested in this one? Well you type in IP config and you go to the you have the names of the adapters here so Ethernet adapter virtual box so it's only network not that I need Ethernet adapter Ethernet and that's gonna be 192.168.0.1 I can't select things on this uh, wretched CMD but that is completely inferior to the Linux terminal but what can I really do about it Anyway, type in ARP-A, scroll up to the top, and you will see that there is an IP address 192.168.0.101. Now, in the Linux, we have been able to establish what is the default gateway, and the default gateway is, of course, the same for all the machines here on the same network. So, the default gateway is 192.168.0.1, that is the very first IP address, that you see and right next to it on the right side it says physical address and then it says 90-f6-52-c1-bb-18 okay so that is our default gateway down below uh, you have a computer that's a that's a host computer and below it is actually 104 which is supposed to be exactly the same oh apparently this is not ARP, ARP spoofed I wonder why let's do IP config it's one it's still 101 let's see if this is gonna work I don't know let's just type in Google web search Google Linux it has indeed added it but why isn't it ARP spoofed that is what I want to know ARP dash A press enter. Hmm. This is quite strange. The MAC addresses are actually exactly the same. How? I have no idea. Apparently, it's not registering it. Probably because it's a virtual machine. But uh, usually 192.168.0.104 will be the same, will have the same MAC address as the default gateway. Why isn't it showing it here? I have literally no idea. But I'm doing this segment for fun anyway, so we're not going to get into that too much. Usually it would show on a physical machine, it will show. Uh, here for some strange reason maybe that's just an assumption I'm not too sure because it's a virtual machine that it's not showing but anyway uh, if you see that anybody on your ARP list has the same MAC address as your default gateway you know that there is something the matter with it you know that there is a problem uh, that there is something going on because the odds of that are well actually non-existent because MAC addresses are regulated by manufacturers and the, it's not possible for two devices to have the same MAC address, especially not for two recent devices. Anyway, uh, I'm going to go ahead and close this frustrating CMD. And you see it says here Google and I've... Okay, so let's just go back to the msn.com. 
Anyway, my search query was Google and if I press web search ah, don't, no, 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 don't fix it, I don't want you to fix it, you never fix anything. So Google, I press web search and the page cannot be displayed. Make sure the HTTP ping google.com does it work? Yes, yes, it does work. What is the problem? Why? Why? Explorer, why? There we go. It is open now. Uh, yeah, I just figured out why this is happening. If you are performing this sort of an attack, your victim might, like I have here, might experience slight delays or temporary loss of connection for a couple of seconds or something like that. I wouldn't call it loss of connection completely. It would, it would just be unable to load the website from the first try, but instead of giving you the reload option here, apparently it just gives you fixed problems, which it doesn't fix. If I was using Chrome or something like that, I would just get an option to reload the page. If you press reload the page, it will succeed, no problems. Now, my search query was Google. And on top of that, it has added a word Linux. How does it know which words to add? Well, simple enough, we can go ahead and modify the script ourselves. So I'm back in the Kali Linux machine. And if I just do a little, oops, ls, my Google search is here. Let me just nano into, nano Google search. Excellent, so it says extra text. Extra text is Linux. I can put whatever I want there. It's completely irrelevant. I'm gonna put, uh, what am I gonna put? Smurf, blue, black, gray wall. I am running out of ideas. What am I gonna put there? Uh, six. <laughs> Let's put the number six just because I am I am completely flushed out of ideas tonight. Anyway, uh, if you wish multiple words, you can plus, you can play, you can type in plus, and I can type in seven. That's like super original from my side. I am all original tonight. Note that this is not actually six plus seven. This is the word six and then plus seven. Let me, let me just think of something else. Let's type in brick. So six plus brick, and then I can type in Space. Then I can type in black, plus, I don't know, black hole. And I can type in plus, I don't know, alcohol, or st I don't know. I have no idea. It doesn't really matter. This is how you would add multiple words. So with a plus sign, you can add pretty much as many words as you like. Eventually, there is a limit somewhere out there, but nothing meaningful. You can add pretty much as many words as you like. I'm just going to leave it at six, not going to bother. But you can try and experiment, type in different things and see what you get with the results. Don't give it too long of a string because it might not work. Anyway, Windows 8. Oh wait, I need to reset. Remember, once you change the configuration files or pretty much anything related to the configuration files from which the configuration file takes something such as this script because the configuration file is taking this script you need to restart the service so service uh, squid 3 restart uh, notice that also my ARP ARP spoofing is going on in the background and I can just reset the proxy, the squid proxy, without pausing the ARP at all, the ARP spoofing process at all. I'm not going to do anything to it, I'm not going to touch it, I'm just going to leave it running while the squid proxy is actually resetting. And I don't know, last time it took maybe 30 seconds, something like that, this time hopefully it's going to take a bit of a shorter amount of time. And there we go, it's done complete. Let's go over to Windows 8. I'm going to close this and let's perform a web search. Why are you giving me fixed connection? Just reload the page. 
And there we go. Once you, I press just Control R. Once you actually re re reload the page, it's gonna work. So you see, it says Google, and then it says six. Anyway, that would be it. Uh, before I wrap this tutorial up, please let me urge you all to experiment as much as you can. Try, try all the other scripts that you can find, but please, and I mean please, do not just download a script from a random link somewhere on the net. Don't do that. You have seen where I found the script, where I've downloaded it. I mean, you can find the script elsewhere. That's not a problem. But be very specific with the place as far as the places from which you download the scripts are concerned. So you've seen I've downloaded it from Google Code, which is pretty safe, and plus I can actually read the script and see what's written in it. And you can in such a way be safer, but if you can't read the script it doesn't it doesn't really do you much good. Anyway. I'm urging you once again, be very careful from where you download the scripts, but please do experiment as well. Try, try a lot of other varieties. One more thing to say is that, you know, browsers are getting updated. There are security precautions which are being put in place, so not all the scripts will work. Uh, this attack won't work forever, and it won't work on all machines, and it won't work against anyone. So please keep that in mind when attempting this. Uh, usually best to go against somebody who doesn't have the latest updates, but that's a pretty general sentence, and you might think that that is such a far-fetched idea that that's impossible. But let me tell you something. Most people don't have the latest updates. They don't have the latest software. Uh, there are multiple reasons for that. Sometimes it's money, uh, but most of the time it's just that people are lazy. They don't perform regular updates, and even though it costs them literally nothing, maybe like five minutes of their time or something of a kind. Another key, another thing is that people are using operating systems for which the security support has ran out. So there are no more security updates for those operating systems, which is fantastic. And you might think that I'm talking about Windows XP or something of a kind. No, I'm not talking about Windows XP. If you're using Windows XP, you have practically have, your machine is practically public property primarily because there are a lot of people out there scanning for those machines as they are extremely vulnerable to all sorts of attacks. Uh, but I'm talking more about, for example, let's say Windows 7. Okay, security support still hasn't ran out, but they're not exactly enthusiastic about it. Uh, Windows 8.1 is fairly good with security, but it still has some loopholes, and if not updated regular on a regular basis, it can encounter problems. And even if it is upgraded, I mean, my system here, it's upgraded. Uh, this red flag that you see at the bottom, this is not the updates, this is just telling me to turn something on for Windows that I don't want to turn on. I think it's the Windows default firewall or antivirus or something of a kind. Anyway. Uh, that being said, I wish to bid you all farewell and I hope to see you in the next tutorial.